While preprocessing approaches for numerical data deal with transforming numerical values to different scales, preprocessing for categorical data is mostly about translating them to numerical data. But why can we not just keep them as categorical data? Most of the machine learning algorithms that are available as part of toolkits to us require our data to contain numerical values only. Quite some of them actually take care of the preprocessing for us. But as this is not the standard, we will cover possible approaches in this video. As discussed in an earlier video, categorical data can be split into two subcategories, ordinal and nominal values. Ordinal values, as we remember, inherit a natural ranking to the labels. For example, small, medium and large are in an obvious ranking. Thus, a possible preprocessing approach for this case is the substitution of the labels with numbers that are in the respective order. So for instance, we can assign 1 to small, 2 to medium and 3 to large. Another approach, which is the main strategy for nominal values, is the so-called one-hot encoding. This approach binarizes all of our labels such that we end up with a bunch of zeros and ones instead of the nominal values. As this might sound a bit confusing, let's take a closer look. Let's consider we have a dataset with two attributes, weather forecast and temperature. While temperature technically can count as ordinal values as cold, mild and hot do have a natural ranking or could just be represented by numbers to begin with, we will use one of the encoding as this example for both attributes. First, we will look at the attributes weather forecast. We will take all possible labels, in our case, sunny, overcast and rain, and we'll create a new column for each of them. By default, we will fill in all rows with zeros for each of the attribute. Now, depending on the value of the weather forecast attribute, we will assign a one to the respective attribute column and for each data point. So for example, in row one, our value for the weather forecast is sunny. Therefore, we will change the value in the new column sunny from zero to one. In the next row, row 2, we see that our weather forecast is overcast. Thus, once again, we change the value in the new column overcast from 0 to 1. We continue to do this for each data point. Once we are done, we then delete the original column weather forecast, as this does not contain numerical values, and we have just translated the categorical values to numerical ones in different columns. So in that sense, the information was duplicated. Looking at the second attribute, temperature, can you already think of a solution? Right, so in this case, we also end up with three new columns, as we have hot, mild and cool as possible values. We then proceed, as before, with assigning zeros and ones respectively to the value in our temperature attribute. And this is how one hot encoding of categorical data works. Not that difficult, right? It is important to note, however, that one-hot encoding very, quick, very quickly blows up the number of attributes you have in your dataset. Imagine an attribute which contains 20 different labels. Using one-hot encoding, this will result in 20 new columns, and then we could have even more categorical attributes that we need to transform. As we do not have many options for how to pre-process categorical data, we will use one-hot encoding in many cases but it is important to keep the blow of attributes in mind as it could increase our runtime significantly. Similar to what we discussed with numerical values, we are now only left with the question of how to deal with missing values. We can follow the same strategy for deleting rows or columns that contain missing values. But as we cannot calculate a mean of categorical data, we cannot perform the same imputing strategies. So how do we proceed here? A very common approach is to use a dummy value as new label wherever information is missing. A dummy value is a new label that does not exist in any of our attributes. It could, for example, just be three question marks. Another way to impute categorical data could also be to use the label that appears the most often in our data. This, however, could once again lead to unwanted bias as we assume information, but we actually do not know any.